All right. How was, uh, <clears throat> here's Mr. Darwin, of course, came up with natural selection. How does natural selection apply to the different species of finch on the Galapagos? Uh, by the time Darwin arrived, many of the islands had finch populations. Uh, Darwin collected some, found out later, hey, there are different species on different islands. What criteria are used to designate different species of finch? Well, the only one we'll talk about, because it's the only one I know, is beak depth. Some finch species have shorter but stouter uh, beaks. Others, to exaggerate quite a bit, had beaks that were a little longer and more slender. And so, <clears throat> how does this fit in with the scheme of natural selection? Where's the struggle? Well, here's the variation, but where's the struggle? What aspect of the environment is uh, providing the struggle or the selective pressure? Well, here's the three steps. Struggle for existence among individuals to start things off. And uh, well, the Galapagos looks like a pretty nice place to live, at least some of it. But even if every single island was a tropical paradise, would they support an unlimited number of finches? No, they're not going to support 10 million finches. And so as the finch population built up and a few adventures, some finches went over to try another island and made babies over there. At some point, there wasn't enough food to go around. The finches had to start competing with their siblings and cousins and all that for food. And so where, what aspect of the environment was providing a struggle? It would have been this, the competition for available food. The competition for available food. All right, and so we've already talked about the variations. Some baby birds in the nest, to exaggerate quite a bit, had beaks more of this shape. Some had beaks that are a little more long and slender. How could some of those possibly be favorable or unfavorable in the struggle for existence? Well, the islands didn't all have exactly the same thing to eat. And some, for example, majored in tough nuts and seeds to crack open. Well, if you're living on the island, you're a finch, you're living on the island, where there's mostly tough nuts and seeds to crack open, which type of beak would it be better to have? I think this one, right? And so you're able to crack those nuts and seeds open, gobble up the contents quicker, while these over here, they're struggling a little harder to get them open, and, and they get left out. They, they get out-competed in the competition for available food, out-competed in the struggle for existence. These get full tummies, these don't. And so which ones, uh, uh, which ones tend to live longer? Well, you know, uh, which ones are favorable? Well, it depends on the island, but here's Mr. Finch. Which Mr. Finch gets to live longer? Well, probably the one with the favorable beak shape for a particular island. And if you get to live longer, you're more likely to do what? you're more likely to make babies. And so, this type of uh, beak shape on an island where there's mostly tough nuts and seeds to crack open, that's going to get you a more, much more, make you much more likely to live long enough to make babies. You outcompete your siblings and cousins with a less favorable beak shape. And what do you do if you live longer and make babies? You're doing what? You're passing on your alleles. Uh, and so you're, the next generation will have more birds with that favorable beak shape and gradually an island will predominate with a particular beak shape. The others, they will not have lived long enough to reproduce and pass on their alleles. And so on this uh, Galapagos Islands, where are different uh, species of finch. Um, we're competing with each other. Some survive, pass on their alleles. Some died or failed to reproduce themselves, producing the various species of finch on the various islands of the Galapagos. End of story.